Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Perry Sound, let's go. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Tis the season to shop local. I rise today to let my colleagues and in the legislature and my constituents know that I'm launching a shop local campaign. Starting this week, my constituents will see newspaper ads and social media posts and hear radio ads reminding them of the importance of shopping local this holiday season. Shopping local not only supports our local businesses, but their employees and our whole community. I did a business survey this summer and found that many businesses in Perry Sound, Muskoka are struggling to compete against online shopping while burdened with increased hydro costs and other government policies. I will continue to stand up for local businesses and local jobs by pushing the government to make it easier to run a business in Ontario. Just this weekend, our leader, Patrick Brown, announced policies to help small businesses, policies like a 28.5% tax cut for small businesses business owners and competitive and stable electricity prices. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait until after the election to introduce such measures. In the meantime, I hope the people of Perry Sound Muskoka will come together to support our local businesses and jobs. Our local businesses do a lot to support our communities across Perry Sound Muskoka, so let's do what we can to support these businesses and their employees. Give a gift to your community this Christmas. Shop local, buy local. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this has been a busy month for poverty reduction advocates. On November 2nd, we received the road Map for Change report from the government's working group. Last week, the Ontario Campaign 2000 released their report card on child and family poverty. Today, there are representatives here from the Ontario Food Banks, which just released its 2017 hunger report. Among the more than 1,200 food banks this organization represents is Hamilton Food Share in my riding of Hamilton East Stony Creek, which does great work, Speaker. The numbers demonstrate how essential food banks are across Ontario. According to the Hunger Report, nearly 500,000 Ontarians visited food banks this year. Of those, 166,000 were children. The reality is that hunger brutally affects many Ontarians, especially our province's most vulnerable. The report I mentioned offered a unique insight into Ontario's poverty and all make similar recommendations, providing affordable housing and adequate social assistance always top the list. I urge this government to take these reports seriously. We need this poverty problem solved right now. It's also important to bring up Bill 6. This bill would create an evidence-based research commission to make recommendations on what social assistance rates should be in each region. What is important about this bill is it ensures that social assistance rates will adjust according to the needs and that Ontario's poorest will always have enough. All it would take is for our government to stop stalling this bill before com committee, and we could have a guarantee that this commission would be in place by the end of this year. There is much more our government needs to do to address poverty, and the report I mentioned gives us a clear guidance on how to do that. Mr. Speaker, let's get moving. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Mississauga, Brampton South. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise in the House as I believe raising awareness about diabetes is extremely important. That is why I brought private members' bill to declare November as Diabetes Awareness Month back in 2008 and again in 2011, which received support from all parties. Diabetes is a chronic and progressive disease that impacts the lives of 4.6 million Ontarians. There are two types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes generally develops in childhood or adolescence. Type 2 diabetes more often develops in adults. According to Diabetes Canada, today there are 11 million Canadians living with diabetes or pre-diabetes. Diabetes rates are about 30% higher among South Asians, Aboriginal, Hispanic, Asian and African Canadians. In September 2011, our government opened a center for complex diabetes at the Brampton Civic Center, which provides one-stop access to highly specialized care for people with complex or advanced forms of diabetes. Mr. Speaker, awareness about diabetes can lead to early intervention, and that can save lives as well as scares Healthcare dollars. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well done. Thank you. Further members' statements. The member from Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I'm pleased to offer a personal tribute to one of the great baseball players of our time and a true gentleman, Roy Doc Holiday. Here, here. As we know, Roy died earlier this month in an airplane accident. 
His life was cut tragically short at the age of 40. Yet Roy leaves a rich legacy that we can all be proud of. As a pro baseball player, he was truly one of the greats. By the end of his career, Roy had pitched a total of 67 complete games, 13 more than any other pitcher. Wow. In 14 of those games, he remarkably threw less than 100 pitches. And add to that two Cy Young Awards. Of course, Roy was also a beloved member of the Toronto Blue Jays ball club. He played with the Jays for a total of 12 seasons in his 16-year-long career. The fans absolutely adored Doc Holliday, here, here. and it's no wonder why. Apart from being a world-class athlete, Roy also had a huge heart. He gave generously of his time and resources to help children in need. His humble attitude and care for the less fortunate made him a role model for all of us. I had the privilege of meeting Roy this past June at his induction to the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame in St. Mary's. About his induction, Roy had this to say. It was a privilege to live and play in Canada for as long as I did. The people here were kind, supportive, respectful, and always seemed to welcome me home, even when I came to visit and sat in the wrong dugout. <laughs> to be inducted into the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame is just another example of exceptional treatment I have received from Canada. Roy will always be remembered as an amazingly talented ball player and a real class act. We're grateful for his legacy, which I hope will offer some comfort to his family during this difficult time. Thank you, Speaker. Well Thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, last week I joined almost a thousand Londoners at the Pillar Community Innovation Awards to celebrate the people and organizations that promote belonging and community well-being by bringing heart and solutions to complex problems. I want to thank Pillar Nonprofit Network and lead sponsor Libro Credit Union for taking the initiative 11 years ago and growing what has become one of London's premier award nights. Most of all, I want to congratulate this year's award recipients. Positive Voice at No Ki Kui, which empowers urban Indigenous women through the development and sharing of positive narratives and stories. Justin Taseo, a John Paul II Catholic secondary school student who organized the first One Run in 2010, a student-led cancer fundraiser that has become a citywide week-long initiative and has raised over $900,000 for cancer programs to date. Community-engaged learning at Western University, which provides students with hands-on experiences that connect classroom learning to social needs, bringing learning to life, helping students find their passion, and strengthening civic engagement. Baby's Book Bag, a partnership between the London Child and Youth Network, the Kiwanis Club of Forest City London, and London Public Library that bonds families around the love of books. And finally, Child Reaches Wild Child, a free outdoor program that improves children's social, emotional, and physical well-being and builds resilience through risky play. I salute each of these amazing award winners, as well as all the finalists, for the profound difference and lasting social impact they are making in our community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statement, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Speaker. The TTC has offered a two-hour transfer feature on the 512 St. Clair Avenue West streetcar service for the last 10 years. The only finishing the, only ending this uh, past September. The feature was designed to increase traffic in the local stores affected by the initial construction of the transit dedicated right away on St. Clair Avenue and a drastic reduction in on-street parking. The on and off privileges that a two-hour time-based tra transfer provides became an integral part of the area's economic vitality and increased visits to the stores and services located along the St. Clair Avenue transit corridor. My constituents, who are members of the Regal Heights Village Village BIA, Regal Heights Residents Association, Corso Italia, and St. Clair Gardens BIA can all attest to the economic benefits for the community and the city when people can shop on the way home along the transit corridor. The ability to use the on and off privileges reduces motor vehicle usage, and that in turn reduces the congestion on the city streets. In the last decade, the City of Toronto made many changes to its planning process and transit development to make the city more livable and walkable. Currently, you Users of Presto Cards can't use the two-hour transfer system in the City of Toronto, despite this system being used in other jurisdictions. Tomorrow, the Toronto Transit Commission will have an opportunity to consider implementing two-hour time-based transfers for the transit users who have purchased a Presto card. Right. I support my constituents' request that the TTC consider the two-hour time-based transfer, and I encourage other members of this House who are affected by this to lend their voices and, uh, and ensure the continuing growth of our communities along St. Clair West and all transit corridors in the City I'm of Toronto. 
Further members of statements? The member from Bruce Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased pleased to rise today and congratulate a constituent of mine, Shelley barford O'Neill, whose significant contributions to agriculture have earned her the 2017 BMO Woman of Excellence in Agriculture Award. Presented annually at the Rural Agricultural Winter Fair by the Federated Women's Institutes of Ontario, FWIO, the award recognizes women with lifelong support of agriculture in their communities and who continue to make a difference today. Shelley comes from a long lineage of 4-H enthusiasts on both the Barfoot and O'Neill sides of the family, <laughs> including her parents, Ken and Barbara Barfoot. Mrs. Barfoot was my grade five teacher. Yeah. They were true agriculture champions for many generations. So naturally, Shelley, who herself is a self-professed and I quote, bona fide 4-H lifer, couldn't wait to become old enough to continue this proud family tradition. As a member of 4-H, Shelley was fueled by a desire to always do more and leapt at every opportunity available to her, attending countless camps and conferences and three exchanges to Niagara, Alberta and Saskatchewan, where she gained strong leadership and life skills and self-confidence. She was in as many livestock and homemaking clubs as possible and remarkably never missed a show. She said representing Gray was an honour to her and she was proud to do so at the Classic and Silver Dollar many times, serving as the Gray County 4-H Ambassador and President of the Gray County 4-H Members Association. A true 4-H leader, Shelley, together with her husband Brian, with whom she met through 4-H, today leads the Wyarton Fitting, Dairy and Sheep Clubs. Previously, she led the Nashville North and Clavering Life Skills Clubs, served as a chaperone for East Gen since it was Silver Dollar, Dairy and Registration Chair for Gray Bruce Regional 4-H Show, Committee member for the Royal Junior Sheep Show and All Ontario Junior Sheep Show. As well, she assisted with the Gray County team at the Classic for many years. Additionally, Shelley was also president of Gray County 4 H Leaders Association and countless other activities. As most of her life revolves around 4 H, is it any wonder Shelley also recently took on the part time role of livestock coordinator with 4 H Ontario? And this speaker is in addition to her work at the Real Estate Institute of Canada. And I quote, Even if it is a little hectic at the moment, Shelley explains, I love it. Brian and I own a couple of Holsteins and love to show, so if there's a show you'll probably find is either at Ringside or in Barnes, depending on work schedules. Shelley is an outstanding role model, and I hope her work ethic and achievements will inspire others to lead in her commitment and passion for agriculture and 4-H. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. That wasn't read fast enough. <laughs> member Stevens, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What a game. I don't know if you saw that incredible great cup yesterday. The Argos. Go Argos. Yeah. What a game. I want to congratulate this amazing team, Under which that. showed the best of Canadian football, the City of Ottawa, which was an incredible host. And I want to congratulate the uh, chairman of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, Larry Tannenbaum, and also Jim Pop, the general manager of the Argos, Mark Tressman, the uh, coach of the Argos. And what about that 100-yard reception by Devere Posey? Wow, a 100-yard record. Then, to top that off, Cassius Vaughn, 109-yard inter interception and return for a touchdown, Cassius Vaughn. What an incredible game. And then the halftime show. Shania Twain at halftime came in on the dog sled. Amazing Canadian uh, football, a Canadian show, the 105th Great Cup. Forget the NFL, forget all this American stuff, the CFL showed that we have one of the best games there is, and the Toronto Argos, who won uh, this great cup, should be congratulated. And Ricky Ray, this is his fourth great cup ring. What an amazing quarterback that uh, led the team in this game. Anyways, congratulations to all the incredible members of that team, and uh, may they uh, win again next year. Go Argos! <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> member statements. The member from Lambton Kent, Middlesex. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas in Lambton Kent, Middlesex. Last weekend, Wallaceburg witnessed the real Christmas spirit when dozens of children received exactly what they asked for from Santa, thanks to local volunteers and sponsors. At a Christmas party at the Knights of Pythias Hall, 40 children visited Santa and told him what they wanted for Christmas this year. The surprise was that Santa's elves were taking notes and relaying their list to volunteers who were standing by at stores, one as far away as Windsor. These volunteers then rushed to track down and gift wrap dolls, Xboxes, toy trucks, absolutely everything the kids asked for. I understand there was even a real live pony on standby in case a child asked for a pony. 
After the children visited Santa, parents received a note that a gift bag was waiting at the local Canadian Tire. When families arrived at the store, they were astonished to find the wishes of each child had been fulfilled. Wow. This was an incredible act of generosity that was a year in the planning, but the impact of this extraordinary kindness will certainly be felt for far longer. I want to sincerely thank all the organizers, volunteers and sponsors that made this wonderful event possible and who undertook a massive effort simply to make Christmas feel special. You have reminded us all of what this season is really all about. Merry Christmas. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore now time for reports by committees.